If you're unfamiliar with Kat Kerr, she is uh, she doesn't have much of a, an audience her herself personally, but she influences private Christian schools curriculums. Uh, she's viewed as a prophet to a lot of really high up, incredibly important megachurch pastors. So she doesn't have a megachurch of her own, but she is viewed as a prophet by other megachurch pastors. Incredibly influential. Do not underestimate her power. She is not a nobody. She's not a nobody. So that's why we got to talk about her. So I figured we, what we'd do is we'd watch this. This came out April 20th, 2022, as you can see on uh, Steve Schultz's clock in the background here. Let's give this a listen. It's Steve Schultz with Kat Kerr and see what Kat Kerr has to say for herself. Good morning, Kat. Good morning. Good to see you. <laughs> I see you got your patriotic uh, outfit on, although I haven't seen this one before, but. Yeah, it is. God tell me it's about time to start putting the red, white, and blue back on for a oh, while. Oh, good, so, good. You know, so that's actually I had, pretty was, good news. I'm actually going to choose teal today. Yeah, uh, I, I got I teal. teal Jack and everything. He goes, no, go get your shirt. Go get your new shirt. <laughs> and he said, I want you to get the. You know, in case you didn't pick this up, Kat Kerr believes that she speaks to God on a regular basis. Like God's always giving her information about anything, including how she should dress bizarrely. The red, white, and blue. I couldn't find my red, white, and blue scarf, so I had Jen go ask my mom because she's got every kind of scarf in the world. And so she saved the day. Thanks, Mom. That's what moms <laughs> do. They save the day. <laughs> yeah, they sure do. They sure do. Yeah, so I, I find it kind of encouraging because God wouldn't, God doesn't do anything in a vacuum. There's a reason for it. So if he's telling you to put red, white, and blue on, that means yep. we're approaching a time of celebration with the red, white, and blue, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, come on, dude. Really? Like, you, <laughs> if God tells you to wear red, white, and blue, well, first of all, God's not telling her to wear red, white, and blue. Just want to clear that up. But if he is, then it means that we're approaching a time of celebration. Are, can you say reading into it a little bit too much? Give me a break. Yes, and I'm actually going to start with the T-shirt. It says, proud to be an American. Um, and it says, uh, land of the free since 1776. I know you probably oh, can so. see it. But, but that's what it says. And I had just gotten this shirt. Someone sent it to me. And so I always like getting red, white, and blue. That doesn't mean everybody needs to send me something. I don't have any more room in the storage. People. <laughs> but thank you for blessing me. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, Though you know the the ladies that have always been on the show and over the years even at conferences women give women lots and lots of gifts it's just yes. a thing it's an open thing they just do it yes. uh, I... women give women lots of gifts what I am so confused by that That's I did right. conferences with Kathy Walter she would just get jewelry upon jewelry upon yeah. jewelry and I'm going well where's all my gifts well <laughs> but. <laughs> But the men don't do that, and women don't give men gifts particularly so. But, you know, I've enjoyed getting a patriotic tie once in a while or something that someone I, wears. That's fine. I think, uh, Steve, because women love just about anything. But a man is usually very particular about what you give him. Uh, even my husband, you know, there's a couple of things I can give him. Something about fishing, that's always going to work. Or something for, you know, a free fishing trip or boat ride or something like that. And, you know, a sea captain, any kind of cap, but that's about all I give him. And yet women, we like anything. We like practical things, fun things, glittery things, you know, uh, things that make everybody smile. So I th Very weird categorizing that I'm watching. I think awesome. it's because women know other women are just going to love this right there. When they yeah. Know. And the yeah, gift and doesn't stop in heaven, people. We'll still do that in heaven. <laughs> we will still give gifts in heaven. That's weird because... It seems to me that in heaven, you could have anything you want, right? Kat Kerr is known for like fabricating all kinds of weird descriptions of heaven. Like at one point she said, uh, wait, let me find this. Hang on. Let, let me see if I can find it. Well, I'll just tell you what she said generally. She said um, that there's a warehouse in heaven and angels work at this warehouse and it's a body parts warehouse basically so if you need a new arm or if your heart is going bad or you need a new liver and you pray for a new arm or liver or something an angel shows up in, in this body requisitions or body part requisitions warehouse 
and he requests the new body part and gift wraps it like gift wraps the new body part puts it in a box and then walks through you physically walks through you holding the box and when he comes out the other side the box is empty and now you have this arm that you were missing or this new heart that you needed or whatever She's saying that this is really actually something that really does happen. She really believes this. She says all kinds of weird stuff, dude. All kinds of weird stuff. Things that make everybody smile. So I think awesome. it's because women know other women are just going to love this right there. When they yeah. Know. And the yeah, gift and I, doesn't stop in heaven, people. will still do that in heaven. And we have a friend, uh, Emiko, uh, soon is there, uh, he's North, uh, South Korean. But she'll go over to South Korea and again, women with women, they'll take her out shopping and they buy yes. <laughs> whole outfits, right? You, has that happened with you as well? Absolutely. It has happened with me. Yes. They just surprised me like the day before I speak. Come on, we're taking you shopping. And they'll take me in a store and say, buy anything you want to. Um, uh, and we're going to pay for it for you. Yeah, it's happened. It's, it's a real blessing. Yeah. Except, well. I, I the, the reason that she's even capable of doing this stuff and people just buying stuff for her, telling her, go inside this shop and we'll pay for anything you want. <clears throat> the reason this happens is because she is so influential. Seriously, do you, you cannot underestimate or Yeah, you can't overestimate how influential this woman really is. Like, I did not realize how influential she is until I started talking to people that were like on the inside of this movement or involved in this movement to some degree. She's incredibly important. She doesn't have a church of her own, but she influences every decision, every belief that these people have. Really? On the platform and maybe a pair of jeans or something like that. So. Well, you know what I what I don't like to throw too many things away, but when I do, I get in the mood, and then everything goes in the bag. But yeah, we tend to save old shirts, but we're never going to wear them. So why are we saving them? I Absolutely agree, dude. Oh my god, I'm so bad about this. Why save them? You're not going to use them ever again. Just toss it in the trash. I know it hurts. I know you don't want it to go to a landfill or whatever. And I don't like that either. The landfill thing. But it's better off in a landfill than cluttering your house and making you miserable. Just be more careful about what you buy next time if you don't want things to go into a landfill. Because you using or you keeping them in your house isn't going to keep them out of a landfill. Ultimately, that's where they're going to go anyways. Try not to buy as much if you don't want them going there. You know, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not a hoarder, but I, we had too many things in the closet. It's been sitting there for years. So my wife and I have been in the mood lately getting rid of stuff. So, hey, yeah. that, that that creates a question in me that I want to throw at you that wasn't on my list. So it, do women go shopping with women in heaven? Or is there stores where you go clothes shopping? Oh, yes. Happen? Oh, please, dude. Uh, yeah, she claims to have like this crazy insight into heaven and what, you know, what there is there. And everything. it's so ridiculous, dude. Why bother asking that? I, he must believe her. He wouldn't ask that if he didn't believe her, right? There certainly is. There really is. Because huh? men is. don't like to shop at all. That's not a you heavenly... Know, it's funny, though. What I, one, of the, one of the first times, not the first time, one of the few first times he took me, um, he actually on purpose took me to a place. He said, this is where you get the gifts. And, and I'm thinking... I'm thinking gifts, but he always answers me just even if I think something. He said, well, you know, everybody uses the gift I gave them on the earth that I will never take away. And I found out that's why there's so many things in heaven. There's, that's why there's amusement parks, rodeos. There's all kinds of places to shop. You don't pay for anything, though. It's all freely made, freely given because people have gifts to create clothing. They create, I've been to a jewelers in heaven. It was amazing. Wow. And um, so all this stuff is given to us. We bless each other with our gifts in heaven. That's why he won't take them away. And I did see a friend of mine, close friend of mine. Um, I saw her mother in heaven. Now, her dad, I think, had passed first. And I saw her mother in heaven. And she was going in and out of every shop. Again, she believes that she goes to heaven on a regular basis and hangs out with God. So just give you a little context there. 
and her person who was her husband was with her. He was carrying all of the boxes and the bags of everything she was getting. She was getting gifts for free. So it was the husband's hell and the, the wife's heaven, I guess. Uh, is that what she's implying here? The, he the, the husband went to hell because he was bad, but it just so happened that the hell that he went to was living in heaven with her. <laughs> oh my God, man. That's funny. Friends. Really? And she's putting them in their mansions as they're being made. So I'm like, that looks absolutely delightful. And so he had me make a CD called for the women called, um, I think it's unlimited free shopping spree in heaven. <laughs> That's that's amazing. Now, when you were talking last week, uh, when we had you on, you were talking about because I never asked it in those terms, and I was picturing a gift shop in heaven. And when you answered this, because I said, "So, are you saying that heaven? When you say it's a world, do you mean it's a globe? Do you mean it's a sphere?" Yes. And you said, "Absolutely." Yes. And as yes. soon as you said that, I thought, "Then there's got to be a gift shop in heaven mm -hmm. with the sphere, sphere, the globe of heaven that oh, people absolutely. can go and, and buy that globe or snow globe." I don't yeah. know. Have you seen any? Do they have trinkets well, the like that? Globes, they, would, they would have those in Christmas Town, but they do have snow globes in Christmas Town, people. Oh my God, dude. These people are so weird. Where's the bar for Kat Kerr, right? Where's the bar for her? Like, how weird is too weird for her? And I think I found it. This one came out February 2nd, 2022. Not that old. And they have people pour millions of dollars into this flat earth society. It just used to be the flat earth theory. I guess when a bunch of people, men got together and decided it was so important, they'd actually name it a society so it'd have a name. Uh, there literally are people, some even well-known people uh, or rich people who have become a part of this thing. They could be made to feel special. They're contributing to what they call is truth. It's nothing but a distraction from Satan. But Jesus laughs every time they hear the earth is really flat. Because you know the word made everything. Jesus made this earth. He knows it's round. Okay, let's say here's the flat earth, right? And there's pilots going around this flat earth. So I guess when they get to the edge, they just flip it all so they can <laughs> kick you over to the other side <laughs> of the flat earth to get where they're going. So, uh, I mean, there are some things that are so ridiculous for people just to waste their time on. But the earth is not flat. It is beautifully round. <laughs> heaven is a beautifully round sphere it's a sphere it is not a flat anything okay so don't worry about falling <laughs> off the edge you're okay isn't that funny we found the bar we found the bar for cat we know how low she'll go and the bar is flat earth she won't she doesn't believe in flat earth now we know i hope you're happy about that because you can't change it okay saint nick lives there and my one brother who passed is actually one of his assistants and uh he's having the time of his life right now but yes is that a wild i have considered myself not now but eventually the parts i've seen now i can't connect every part of heaven obviously it's way too massive but it is a globe and it says in the bible that the earth is a shadow a type in a shadow of heaven so we all know those who are wise and smart and intelligent know this earth is a globe uh, and there's many reasons and purposes why he needs it to be a globe. Why would it not be when heaven, the world called heaven, the Father's house is a whole world, a globe, bigger than even our galaxy. And yes, Steve, I've never even told anybody this. Yes, you can find in heaven, not only do they have globes of that very world of heaven that shows all the different places you can go and things to do on there, they actually have like a wall hanging type of a thing that says the world called heaven. And you can see almost not like a map. I don't know how to describe it, but you actually you would touch the place on there and you would be there instantly in really? heaven. Like oh, you want wow. to go to in heaven. Sheesh. I mean, God, she just describes this stuff with such confidence, doesn't she? Stepped away for a second, but heard the unlimited free shopping and someone who spent half a decade in retail thought, so shoplifting yeah that would be interesting right i mean is there shoplifting in heaven i guess everybody's perfect so probably not right if heaven is a sphere and earth is its shadow then the earth is flat i know there you go flat earth confirmed by cat kerr thank you cat i have considered myself not now but eventually the parts i've seen now i can't connect every part of heaven obviously it's way too massive 
but it is a globe and it says in the bible that the earth is a shadow a type in a shadow of heaven so we all know those who are wise and smart and intelligent know this earth is a globe uh and there's many she obviously has a big problem with flat earthers any reasons and purposes why he needs it to be a globe why would it not be when heaven, the world called heaven, the Father's house is a whole world, a globe, bigger than even our galaxy. And yes, Steve, I've never even told anybody this. Yes, you can find in heaven, not only do they have globes of that very world of heaven that shows all the- Wow, she's like really laying into flat earthers right now. They actually have like a wall hanging type of a thing <laughs> that says the world called heaven. And you can see almost not like a map, I don't know how to describe it, but you actually you would touch the place on there and you would be there instantly in really? heaven. Like you oh, want wow. to go to heaven. Jeez. Yeah, he is taking her so seriously. It blows my mind. But people really do believe everything that she says. And it's not just small people either. She's incredibly influential. I mean, so that, that sounds that like that sounds like Epcot Center and Disney World's got all the countries there, but and they had these years ago when we went they had these stations that you could punch in them so it's that kind of an idea only you get only you're transported you know but i want to take helicopter rides people have seen my facebook i take i take flight training with helicopters and so i i want to i'd either want to ride on a helicopter around the globe in heaven or i want to give people <laughs> rides around it because you know helicopters have been in my blood since i was a little kid you know i probably yeah. will never actually get licensed because it's like that's complex but um, well, in heaven, you don't need to be licensed, Steve, but I assure you because that's a desire of your heart. You probably. I'm sorry, what? You don't have to be licensed in heaven? Are you serious? What happens if you, like, crash into stuff? You wreck this helicopter. Like, there's obviously a local economy in heaven, right? Because she was just talking about how her brother is Santa's assistant or something because Santa lives up there. So obviously there's some kind of a local economy where people trade for goods and things like that. So money must have value in heaven, logically. If we're following this to its logical end, money must have value. I'm just poking little holes in this because you have to poke these holes. Probably have your own little uh, mini pads all over the place on your property where people can come. You have property too. This is just more evidence that there's uh, a local economy in heaven, apparently, but where people pay for goods and services. And in exchange for those goods and services, they get some amount, gold, heaven bucks, something. I mean, I know that I'm, I'm expanding this to a ridiculous degree. That's the point. What she's saying leads to logical absurdity. And we have to point that out. We have to point out the logical absurdity of what she's saying and how it leads you to a, an absurd logical end. I'm sure you will be able to take people for helicopter rides around heaven. It's the most glorious ride you'll ever have in your existence. So, wow. yeah, it, God really wants to bless the heart of people, especially those who, who, who have done great things for him. And that great thing could be loving your neighbor who's not nice to you it could be helping somebody across the street it could be buying groceries for families who don't have food especially right now god doesn't forget that and he'll give you these great surprises i just told you one of yours the, the helipads everywhere you know this is one of the weirder things that i hear people saying you're not supposed to be doing nice things to get something back I mean, you should be doing it because you want to help people, because they're suffering, right? Not because you want to store up stuff in heaven or whatever. Not just on your property, but places you'll take people to in heaven. We'll have a helipad there for you to really? go to land. And so it, it'll be great. Heaven's the most amazing place I, I've ever seen or been to. They really do believe that she's been to heaven and she goes there on a regular basis. They really do believe this. And it's not a small percentage of people that believe her. She's incredibly influential in the evangelical movement. Well, it seems like the things that we find ourselves drawn to, like as a kid, I was into helicopters. It seems like that, that desire that never left me 
that had to be coming down from the father of lies, wouldn't yes. it? Yes, it would. It would have to be coming down from the father of lies. Is that what he said? It would have to be coming from him. Okay, let me step back to 1627. Let's keep listening. That desire that never left me, that had to be coming down from the father of lies, wouldn't yes. it? Yes, it would. Did he not just say the father of lies? Isn't that supposed to be Satan? Although if you think about it, you know, Satan told a grand total of zero lies in the Bible. God told an awful lot. So maybe God is the father of lies. It just sounds... Oh, light! Is he saying father of light? Okay, that makes a little bit more sense. I swear... I guess I have father of lies on the brain when God comes up. That's my mistake. But it would have to be coming from him. <laughs> That's so cool. And, you know, I'm sure they'll have all kinds of helicopter type things. But anyway, well, I mean, I'm ready for any questions. Anything else you want to say before we get into uh, Oh, there or? is absolutely something God okay. wants to say. Okay. <laughs> all right. When he, uh, he, uh, he came in my room last night. Now I was out front. Oh, it's getting weird. In our reception area, because it's certainly not our home yet. Uh, we haven't moved yet, but we will be. Uh, I was out there just saying things to him. This is how it happened. I was just saying things to him from my heart, not asking him. I rarely ask him anything, but I was just saying things to him, how blessed, how much he blesses me, how much I love wow. him, how my passion is for him and for his son. And then all of a sudden, his presence. He didn't come visibly into the room, but his presence so consumed me. I could hardly sit down. That's what she said. Um, what a weird description, right? Is it just me, or is this a, like a really weird description of what happened? I began to burn like fire all around me. And then, then he started speaking to me, and he was talking about what is about to start happening as, as one of the signs to bring us to celebration. Celebration is coming. He is about to touch the wealth of the wicked. <laughs> wow. What does that mean? He's about to touch the wealth of the wicked and she's like laughing and so happy about it. And I don't understand. You going to give us more info here, Kat? And uh, two nights ago, he had me stand in the middle of the road. There I was, you know, again with my with one of my um, I can't remember what they, they call them now. <laughs> staff <laughs> with my staff. He had me with her staff. Oh, you mean the stick? OK, yeah, I know the stick you're talking about. Uh. You know, since we're talking about it, let me just show the audience here. Hang on. Let me remind you guys of the stick that she's talking about. All right. So we've got this stick. This is probably her most famous stick. So right now, at this moment, we take authority over Dorian that has no right off the coast of this state or anywhere. And we hit that storm to the east right now. And I'm going to do it three times. We hit it to the east. Yeah, so that, that's Kat Kerr, Weather Warrior. Like I said, she's not a nobody, okay? People believe her. They listen to her. Christian schools around the country have her write their curriculum. No joke. Okay, so that's one example of her stick. I want to I show you guys another example of the stick, the, the important stick. Yeah, okay, this is the other example of her using the stick that I remember. This is her, well, I'll, you know, I'll let the clip speak for itself. Just watch. Right now, I declare, and I call for our president to take his rightful place, Trump, to come forth right now, step into your destiny that God gave you, called you, appointed you, and anointed you for this time to declare over America. This is March, uh, this is early March, by the way, before March 4th. If you're unfamiliar with why that date is important, there's a QAnon conspiracy theory about how March 4th is when the real president was going to be inaugurated as the real president of the US, and Biden is the fake president of a fake United States. It was all made up, of course. And when the date came and went and Trump wasn't president, they continued believing that he secretly was inaugurated on March 4th. So anyway, this is her basically saying on March 4th, or right before it, that she called Trump forth to be the president on March 4th. To 
help America. <clears throat> this is his choice, and we call you forth right now in the name of Jesus Christ, who is with you, who will always be with you. The people are with you. The prophets of God are with you. The military is with you. So come forth. Step into your destiny now, saith the Lord. She believes herself to be a prophet of God, no joke. She believes that she is like Moses, and that's why she has a staff. Seriously. So anyway, that's what she was talking about when she mentioned her little staff there, her, her stick. That's the that's stick lady is what I call her sometimes, stick lady. I can't remember what they, they call them now. <laughs> Staffs. <laughs> With my staff, he had me send a billion of the hosts to the north, a billion to the south, a billion wow. to the east, to the west. And the purpose they were being sent was to start to strip away the wealth of the wicked. Very <laughs> I, cool. I'm not Very making cool. this up. He yeah. said to start watching the market. Watch the market people and see what happens to a lot of the wicked. He says some of them are about to lose everything because it's, you know, it's harvest time. Seed time and harvest time. What they've been seeding against us. To steal, kill, and destroy those who have great money, the wicked are about to start losing it. And God said, You can actually watch. If you don't watch the financials, I think there's a, a program out there, a channel. I don't remember what the name of it is. He said, But this is actually something that will be in the news, and no one's going to be able to stop it from happening. It's part of the landslide or fraud exposure that he spoke again. This is his words part of the, land fraud, the landslide or fraud exposure. She's said this so many times. She's just running the words together now. That's funny. He gave on November the 4th on 20, is it 2020, Steve? I think. Yeah, 2020, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when he said that, that no one would be able to hide from the exposure and that things would begin to happen and then they would begin to fall upon each other. She's referencing her old prophecies, by the way. That's, that's what she's doing right now. Landslide of frog exposure. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, let's keep listening. He said, keep watching. Very soon, you're going to start seeing the first one of someone who's got great wealth, but very wicked. They're about to lose their property, their money. And, you know, I don't, I'm not someone who wants calamity to happen to people. But if they keep pushing God and crushing people's lives and stealing what he gave them or meant for them to be, even their, even some of their futures are being stolen because of the wicked. Uh, the wicked wealth, and he said, keep watching, you're going to start seeing it being taken away from them, and yes, he will be involved in that. It'll happen in the natural, though, so you'll be seeing yeah. it, and that's why when I got up today, he said, you will wear the red, white, and blue again, nice. so I tell you to stop wearing it. That could oh, be a, wow. a couple programs, I don't know. He said, because this is time for America, America first, you'll see that, but then internationally, You'll see very wicked, even some of the leaders of countries who are wicked would begin to lose their position and uh, their their wealth, their voice. It's going to happen, people. And you need to start. Totally. Totally. It's totally going to happen, people. Absolutely. You can pray for their soul, but you need to start celebrating that this is God's time for yeah. justice. Yeah. And, you know, that, I think it's Psalms, but it might even be Proverbs and other places where we're, we're instructed. I don't have the specific one, but there's multiple places where it says, don't fret when the wicked prosper um, because their day is coming. And that's the paraphrased idea. It's yes. multiple places. He says, don't fret over them um, because they're like grass. They're going to melt away. They're going to die away. So we don't want. Does grass melt? This is news to me. I thought grass burned, not melted. Okay anyone to be lost that doesn't have to be lost of course and you That's said right. that but we want their wealth to be taken away an, an example of that was in the prophetic roundtable that i've been a member of they told this story where they were coming by a palm reader astrologist thing you know still people doing stuff that is not of god and this this woman prophet sat at the light and began to i guess for lack of a better word come against the people that were in there and God said, no, stop her. He says, no, don't do that. Just curse the wealth that's keeping her in business. Yeah. Okay, so the, the, the prophet's name is Sharon. She says, okay, so our Lord, I curse the wealth that's keeping her in business. And that woman came streaming out, screaming, saying, no. I don't even know if she knew the lady was at the intersection or not. But the, when, when the wealth is cursed that was ill-gotten gained or, or things that, when you serve the wrong kingdom, 
all of the things that you're able to do are gone. It's not just like a punishment. It's like justice. It's like now it's now it's taken from you. You know, that's you give it to another. This is so confusing, dude. Like this tangent that they're going off on right now is so weird. Seriously. What the hell are they talking about? That's the whole point of God doing it is they're funding all of this stuff that's going on. That's why they're able to do it. Um, honestly, the fake leadership of our country are not extremely wealthy people in their own right. They're being paid by other people, even in other countries who have so much money. It's yeah, of course, she's making this up completely, has no idea what she's talking about, has no way to know any of this information. Even if it were true, it was a complete guess on her part at best. She is making this up entirely. It's outrageous. But God in all of this is telling me there are still some Boazes out there that have more than anybody in our country. Uh, even the, some of the ones they are in this country right now have more wealth than even Soros has. Really? Wow. Honestly, George Soros is not that wealthy. Seriously. Uh, how, how much money does that guy have anyway? So let me look. Oh, hang on. Give me a second. How much money does George Soros even have? He is like the eternal boogeyman. $8.6 billion. Okay. That's a lot. Trump has, you know, according to Donald Trump, he has just as much, first of all. He could fund right-wing causes just as easily. But you know what Donald Trump is doing? Is Donald Trump funding right-wing causes? No. He's taking money from people and keeping it. That's what Donald Trump is doing. He's taking the money and keeping it. And also, for the record, Elon Musk has just an obscene amount of money. Holy shit. Somewhere around 250 to 300 billion dollars. That's so much money it's hard to conceptualize. The difference between a million seconds and a billion seconds is so astronomical. If you counted to a million, one per second, it would take you 12 days, roughly. If you counted to a billion, it would take you 32 and a half years. 12 days versus 32 years. That's insane. It is truly hard to conceptualize how much $240 billion is. And it's even harder to conceptualize how much a trillion dollars is. Oh my God, is that a lot of money. Point is, George Soros is not this boogeyman that they make him out to be. Yeah, yeah but I mean, he's about I... to start taking away because when, as long as they have that, they can continue in the natural realm yeah. to wreak havoc, uh, havoc on our lives because... They pay for broadcasts. They pay for people to do wicked things. They, they, they do all kinds of things with that money. Money is not evil. It's the desire for the money, okay? Right. Greed, that's what's wicked, but not money itself. Money helps to rescue. It builds. It, uh, it, it in, inspires people. It encourages people. And for me, as I've always... I agree with her on that, actually. That's not a super common position, I guess, or it's not... I don't know. There's nothing wrong with money. I don't think money is bad and you aren't bad for having money or wanting money, but wanting like using it for nefarious purposes, that's bad. Uh, and people tend to do that, unfortunately. Instead of God sends it to, to me, he gets to spend it. OK, God gets to spend it. That's so and good. so you all know that it says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous and the just. So you should be very excited about those words that were just spoken. That is God's words, that it is coming right now. It's going to start very, very soon. You're going to start seeing the first one who begins to lose their money uh, because they're they're doing wicked and evil things with it. So there you go. So justice. Good. Well, yeah, and I, and I say again, God didn't tell you to wear red, white, and blue in some sort of vacuum. There's a purpose that he's saying, he's saying that. Last time you wore so much red white and blue like this we were getting away from the stolen i'm just gonna watch my words carefully we were getting away from uh, november 4 and we were moving and we watch his words carefully why i i didn't realize that there was a problem with him saying stolen election i can say stolen election i guess if he's worried about like i i think that a lot of places are cracking down on 
you know, election conspiracies. I haven't had any problems. And usually if there's a rule like you're not allowed to be homophobic, you're not allowed to talk about climate change or you're not allowed to deny climate change. You're not allowed to downplay the Ukraine war or something like that. Usually if there's a rule like that, rules that I agree with, I end up getting in trouble in the end because I'm debunking people that are saying those things. It, it's not supposed to work like that. And in YouTube's terms of service and stuff, it explicitly says you're allowed to debunk stuff like that. But it doesn't seem to matter. They get me in trouble for that anyways, weirdly. But anyway, I didn't think Facebook had a rule against like the election or whatever else. Weird. Well, for a couple of weeks, we all wore red, white, and blue. We did. Yeah. And then it began to say, okay, we're in this for the long haul. So we didn't necessarily keep all the red, white, and blue on. But if God's telling you, okay, now it's time to put it on. Yes. That's, that's like a prophetic word. You know? Dude, these guys are so detached from reality. It's ridiculous. No. It is. So. It really is. And so he wants me to hit the gavel because justice is here. So I'm going to hit this gavel three times. Why does she always hit the, like, do things in series of three? This is so weird, dude. Like she said, she's going to swing at the uh, hurricane with her staff three times, remember, a minute ago? She is an odd bird, dude. So be it. Good. Let yeah. <laughs> come in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, if you're ready for some questions, I'm looking at my first one. Um uh, these are in not this is sometimes there's an automatic conversation opener that was we just came right into this one. It will seem random in retrospect. But here's okay, the first okay. question on my list. It says, are there special places? Are there special places in heaven for people? And I guess this means special reward places, I think is what they're trying to say. Are there special places in heaven for people who remain celibate intentionally for the Lord? Why would you do that? God created sex, basically, to be something that people enjoy, right? Why would people think that it's virtuous to remain celibate? That's supposed to be a good thing. God did that because he loves us, I thought. Didn't he? Why are they obsessed with erasing the things that God created? This is so strange. I'm I'm sure there there are well I know of one place for certain um, that is one of their favorite places to go to because the Lord is in this one place m much of the they don't have time but uh, you will find him in that place a lot. Oh, I love how she caught herself in that much of the well they don't have time so I guess I can't say much of the time they're in this place. That's funny, dude. Well, at least she caught herself on that one. Um, I would have been the one catching her out if she hadn't. Uh, and it's called Passionate Paradise. It's about passion for him. Okay. It's those who had such passion for him, they just gave him everything. And not every person is called to do that, just, just to let you know. In the Bible, there were some he even called to do that. Uh, but yes, there actually is a place. I'm sure they will want to be in that place a lot since the Lord shows up. And he comes to see who is there waiting uh, to see him or to meet with him. So for, for sure, passionate paradise uh, in heaven is a place where people who dearly love Jesus and have given their whole self to him, uh, you will you, you get to do things like the father will give you his own songs, um, their songs of adoration, and you'll actually get to sing them to the Lord. Wow. And, this, is ugh, this is bizarre stuff, dude. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. There's liquid pools of every color of water I've ever seen in my life. I wasn't there for very long, but it is for those who are, who, who really adore Christ. And uh, I'm sure the people who, are, who live that kind of life will totally want to go there when they get to heaven. You know, I've heard people say, um, and ask the question, how do I know if I'm called to be celibate? And I've heard an answer for this that rings true to me, but it may not be what rings true to you. So the question is, how do I know if I'm called to be celibate? That one of the answers is if you were called to be celibate, you would know it. Yeah, I would think you would absolutely know it. I would imagine that most of the people who claim to be called to be celibate like this 
they're probably ace, right? Like they're probably asexual and that's why they've decided that most of them, not all of them, certainly. Uh, some of them are, are suffering terribly because they believe that, you know, God called them to do this thing or whatever when, you know, there is no God, honestly. And even if there was, he wouldn't try to force people to cut a part of human existence out completely for no reason. It's just so weird, dude. So weird how they view things. Uh, let's see. The Christian fundamentalists fundamentalist I grew up around believed if you were gay, you were called to be celibate. Okay, that's the, yeah, that's a good point. That's fair enough. A lot of people believe if you're gay, then you're called to be celibate or whatever else. So interesting, interesting, so, um, interesting point. Thanks for mentioning. If you're dead, if you're not sure, then you're probably not called to be celibate. Probably not, because I know when there's a uh... When God has put a, a call or a mark on you, you probably have a mark. If I saw you, I could probably see it. Oh, well. He put the mark on you to to belong to him wholly. And um, some people can have that mark, even that are married, uh, but they never stop making Christ uh, the number one in their life. It's not. There's nothing wrong with that. You can be passionate about Christ. Of course, when he has you get married, that's because that represents Christ and the church together. But there are some people who are so... I'm super confused. So if you get that mark of celibacy when you're married or after you get married or something, is she saying that you're basically supposed to be celibate in the relationship too? I thought it was like your responsibility as a wife or, what, or a husband or whatever to like, you know, do stuff to consummate the marriage. Is that not like a requirement of being married in Christian's eyes? Oh, love him so. They, they have no longing for someone else in their life. You don't long for another person. So it's not like if he called you to be a celibate, he's not going to bring someone to you and then you have to push them away. Uh, okay, well, I mean, I've heard a lot of examples of God tempting people with things intentionally that like, you know, somebody's dealing with something that they believe is wrong and God sends temptations their way. Like if you're gay, God will send a, a really, really attractive dude to be interested in you as a temptation. H have you guys not heard of that? I'm not understanding. Like it's super weird to me that she's forgetting all of those times that God tempted people intentionally to mess with them. Anybody else remember this? It's yeah. like it's just never there that you want all your time to be with him. So I would totally say you would you would have to know that you were called to do that. Yeah. She, interestingly enough, she doesn't seem to be one of those people that believes that you have to be celibate to be like one of God's people or whatever. Some people out there are like that. Some people like that genuinely believe it. And I think that's one of the most harmful things ever. Uh, just not just not healthy, not healthy. And there have been people and we don't have to say any kind of names today or anything, but there have been people who said they were called and preached that they were called uh, to be celibate. And then later we found out that they, I don't, I don't think they were living this way all the time, but they had fallen one or more times into homosexuality. This is maybe just at least an opinion on your side. Is that, would that indicate that maybe they never were called to be celibate or what? Uh, how, hey, this is interesting. This is exactly what we were talking about a minute ago. Somebody said like, if you're gay, then the church believes you're supposed to be celibate or you've been called to be celibate or whatever. Really interesting. All right. Say that they either just threw themselves off the path God had them on for sure, because if he get, if he did call them for that, that meant they began to listen to the words of the enemy or the thoughts of the okay. enemy is what happened. And I'm sure that the devil would like to steal anybody he could, uh, especially their destiny. If he can course they believe homosexuality to be wrong um that's kind of their whole bit that's their belief system so not surprised to hear them saying all this stuff wreck and ruin your destiny or take your joy away he's going to go after it but if you were called to be celibate and you knew that was your whole heart you wouldn't necessarily be able to be drawn into that or you didn't stop resisting it uh if yeah. you resist the devil and his thoughts and his things he will flee from you if you're if you're under the hand of God, it says so in the word, and you resist him, he will run away from you. 
he he's going to know it's not doing any good. I'm wasting my time. I'm not going to keep doing that. But I would totally say if they knew that in their heart and then they begin to live differently, especially in sin, because when yeah. you twist how God made you, that is sin. Uh, and yes, the Bible says that because the enemy wants to steal who you really were sent to be. Wow. So if you twist who you're supposed to be, then that's sinful. Interesting. Well, I just so happen to know that a lot of LGBT people are supposed to be LGBT. That's just who they are. That's their personality. That's their identity. That's who they are. That's it, man. So twisting who you're supposed to be out of proportion and not being who you are is a sin. That's interesting. It, words of wisdom from Kat Kerr. Thank you, Kat Kerr. Really fascinating to hear that viewpoint from her. <laughs> And if, especially if you were sent to be just to be with Jesus Christ and give all your love to him and your in your time and attention, it doesn't mean you have a regular life. Like you can still have a job. You can still do all kinds of things. But if that passion is in you to give yourself to Christ until he either takes that away and you would know if he took it away, don't listen to the devil's lies because he'll start yeah. to lie and say, well, you're different anyway. You don't need to have a spouse. You don't need to be married. You know, uh, you can give yourself to Christ, but still have something else. That mm. would not be God saying that. Okay. Yeah. Would not be God saying that. I, I I want to get to the next question in a minute, but I want to ask one more based on something you just said. You talked about that scripture that says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You're a seer, so you see things happen where I... A seer being like a super secret prophet, like a prophet that sees things or whatever else. Um, she believes herself to like receive special visions from God and, and all that. It's ridiculous, dude. Never seen the devil flee or a demon flee. Can you somehow describe an example where you've seen somebody just resist? Is it the moment they say, no, nah, I'm not going to do that sin. The enemy runs, or is this some sort of a long-term? I don't know how to ask the question. What does it take to make the devil flee? I mean, you say, no, I don't want to do that. Help, Lord. But what makes him run from you, flee from you? It is so embarrassing that they're actually asking her unironically for the answers to these questions. It's the fact that you're living a life. Um, you're living the life Christ asked us to live. We represent him and the earth. Well, he didn't sin. You don't have to sin at all. I don't know why people think that, you know, it says in the Bible for all of sinning comes, all have sinned. That's the past, okay? Uh, you may have been sinning at one point in your life, but you don't have to sin now at all. Okay. You, you resist temptation, number one. If you're already resisting the thoughts of the enemy or the words of the enemy, you're already building that that fierceness to keep yourself out of the enemy's camp. If you ever consider that the enemy wants you to sin or do things wrong, you're actually helping the one who wants to kill you and all your family. That's what you're doing. If you want to play in the camp of darkness and evil and wickedness, then it has a hook in you. And that's why the devil will come back again and again, take you deeper and deeper into sin. So you should start building that ahead of time saying, I will serve no other God. There is no other God before me. Satan hates those words. And the first time he comes to tempt, I would turn like he was there and say, I will serve the true and living God. There is no other God before me. So get out. And I mean, you need to be that passionate about it. See, that's resistance right there. So that's how you tell the devil to stay away. That's how you repel the devil. This is so bizarre, dude. So bizarre. So if you have a recurring temptation, you didn't resist the devil hard enough? I guess so. Thoughts, that you have nice thoughts all the time. You're actually making a point to resist what he's trying to get you caught into. And eventually he's going to stop coming. And let me tell you, demons will That's what she said. run and flee. And I have actually seen the devil flee from me. Because he's stupid enough to try to get me to tempt me into something. Even with all my encounters and knowing the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I actually laugh at him. And I say, get out. I will serve the true and living God and only him. And he will run. as He just goes right out wow. of the wall. He comes wow. Down oh, I've got to get this one. This is about 3155. Let me write this timestamp down. This is so ridiculous, dude. 3155. That's good. That's that's on point. I love it. Wow. If he wants to get beat up, he does. <laughs> if he wants to get beat up, he does. Oh, my God, dude. dude. All right. Um, next question. What do familial relationships, what do family relationships look like in heaven? What I call my dad, for instance, dad, this person's asking, hey, dad, hey, mom. 
or what? Because my dad's name was Jim, Jim or James. It seems, this is my question, but it seems like I would have a hard time in heaven saying, hey, Jim, <laughs> what, I, what's your thoughts? I don't think God minds you doing that at all. I mean, he knows in your heart that you know that he is your father, your true father. And uh, I, I think he gave us a, a family. Well, interesting. So the question is, we're, I guess when we get to heaven, we're supposed to refer to God as dad and nobody else. But it would be uncomfortable calling your other parents dad or, or calling your other parents by their original name, I guess. OK, interesting. Uh, so by that logic, wouldn't that mean that you're supposed to call God dad? Not God, but dad specifically, you call him dad or daddy, if you will. God, that's so creepy and weird. Seriously. Jesus Christ. It makes me cringe just to hear that. God, I can't stand it. All right, let's 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 continue. For a reason. I do know that everybody lives near their family, and they even have, and I know, <laughs> I heard Hank saying he would live with Brenda when he gets to heaven in their own mansion. And I, it was kind of funny. He said she'd have most all of it. He'd get one little corner in it. And, you know, because <laughs> I'm adamant, because I'm, the father's adamant, when you're on the earth until death do you part, you're married. That's what the, the vows even say that. It's not because he's being mean. It's right. because when you get to heaven, we will have a wedding with Jesus Christ. He will be, he is our betrothed right now. And you'll love him more than anybody. And that's going to be so normal and natural in heaven that he is the number one for everybody. But God. Wow. So she's saying you're in heaven. You're going to marry Jesus. Everybody is going to marry Jesus. I guess they're suddenly in favor of polygamy, huh? Weird. When you move to heaven, you are his son returning home or his daughter returning home. That's why he gives you your own mansion. You're coming home as a son and a daughter. And if you had children, grown children yourself and were able to pay for it, you wouldn't want them to have to share a house. You <laughs> Apparently, Kat Kerr's net worth is around seven to eight million. No wonder she danced around that topic carefully. Scribe Angels wrote the forward to her book. Wow, really? Is she really worth that much? Holy shit, dude. It's crazy. I had no idea. Yeah, I mean, I guess she wrote a book, and that's probably where a lot of the money came from. That's interesting. Huh. You would want them to have their own, and that's his heart for that. But I've seen like, um, I guess, family, there's like whole uh, big areas in heaven that have these massive, I don't even know what to call them. They're like all these mansions together, but they have um, hallways joining each other. Oh, really? So oh, the cool. families can be together whenever they want to. And in the middle of this whole place, this is like probably miles and miles long. So you still have your own mansion, but some families are so close. They have these little hallways they walk down into and they're in this big common area. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter if there's 50 of you, you all can eat together for whenever you want to. Uh, you can have events together, invite all your friends that you know to come and, and be a part of your of your whole big celebration you're having there in heaven. It's not like he's trying to keep us apart. Everybody no. is going to want to be with Jesus in heaven, but he is not going to get upset. I do know that I've heard children, I know that when parents have been taken to heaven, if they had a child that passed, and they literally saw their child in heaven. That child called them mom if it was their mom or called them dad if it was their dad. And I also know people were caught up to heaven and uh, they saw their brother. And they said, well, hi, brother. Uh, wow, this is so awesome to see you here. And he put his hand on his shoulder and said, yes, yes, we are brothers. So What? This is so weird the way she's describing all this stuff. So incredibly weird, man. So I think, um, I don't think that something that's wrong in heaven to do i just know everyone calls the father father in heaven and everybody calls jesus christ their beloved in heaven you know and uh, taking off on of what you just said about you know, hank so is there no marriage in heaven then like can you not marry whoever you want or whatever you're only married to jesus right i hadn't heard him say that but you know since there's not sleeping so there's no bedrooms to the, to share or be there's no no need to use a bathroom so there's no not this lack of privacy so husbands and wives who are best friends on the earth would it be somewhat natural for them to still be 
like the best of the best of friends and do lots of things together. They do. Like, hey, they do. Yeah. They, so they do, but there's so many things that you don't even understand. They're in your mansion or on your property. Yeah. It isn't just the building your mansion. It's the whole place he made that is your property. There's so many fun things to do that you love to do. And yeah, uh, uh, people who were married on the earth, a lot of them do things all over together. And if they were married three times and their spouse died and the other of them, they have three best friends. And wow. they do a lot of things. They go places together. They visit their families, the families, the ones with the families together. So it's not like he's against any yeah. of that. Well, I mean, Jesus addressed that whole thing about you don't know the power of God nor the, nor the scriptures because, you know, just that puts me on tilt because my wife and I have been married 44 years. So think if if we hadn't been, if she had had two other husbands or something, so uh, today she's going to be off with that best friend, which is husband. That would I, that puts me on tilt, but God is able to. That's not a thing. Jealousy is not a thing, right? It doesn't it, it, wow, that puts me on tilt. If she remarried or something like that, that is so crazy, man. Uh, I love how they are expanding on this ridiculous lore, like it's true. It's so interesting. It does not exist. No jealousy. No greed. No fear. No hate. Uh, no confusion. I mean, it's not even there. It's not there. It doesn't. There's no place in your soul for it, but it's not there. So you couldn't even get that. Couldn't even. You couldn't access you. it because there's nothing to access. There's no jealousy or insecurity or no. feel bad. And everybody's or you like so it. happy to be with each other. But yeah. I, I, I have seen uh, certain people who passed away, and I did see them like they were married three times. Their wives died. And when they went to heaven, they were all waiting at the gate to say, hi, we're so happy to see you here. It wasn't like, well, are you going to spend this day with me and that one with them? It, there wasn't any of that there. And besides, you want to see everything in, in heaven when you get there, too. So yeah. the, everybody has uh, their own choose to choose what they want to do, where they want to do it. And some people just hang out with each other a lot. But in the well, yeah. mansion that would be your mansion, they could be doing something fun together. And that one, then go over to the next one. Then. To, to her mansion or something like that, but God yeah, just the, laughs. He laughs yeah, up in heaven when people. The whole that. conflict of the soul that we have on this planet. There is none. There's no soul conflict. There's no wounds. There's no passed no. down insecurities. None of that. So that's that. None. You know, we have. That's what all Jesus could do or chose to do is to say, you know, don't know either the scriptures or the power of God, because we'll all live like angels. He was very clear on that. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Anyway. Yeah. You're not. You'll be as the angels are, and the angels are not married, but the angels have friends. Like nothing that they're saying is scriptural. None of this is biblical. I understand that she's like claiming to be a prophet or whatever, but it's nonsense from top to bottom. Everything that she's uh, everything that she's saying is nonsense. <laughs> 